Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, Revelation worshipers. Come on, come on. I need you to stand up on your feet and give God the highest praise. Today, things are going to change in your life. And if you believe that, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory for what you are about to do tonight, Lord God. I thank you for the freedom that you are about to give every single person that is here. And for the people that are streaming as well, Lord. I give you praise. Somebody lift up your voice. Lift up your voice and begin to give God all the praise and all the glory because he has never lost your battle. He has never lost your battle. He is pushing. He is pushing for you tonight. So I want you to just open your mouth. Father God, we give you praise. We give you glory. Tonight we're going to pour out, Father. For tonight we're going to pour pour out Lord God we're gonna pour out our worship we're gonna pour out our praise whether we are dancing on the aisles whether we are clapping our hands we are gonna pour out Lord we're gonna pour out thank you Jesus thank you father for what you're doing right now thank you that you are shifting every single atmosphere right now I thank you that every angel that is here is touching you right now I thank you for the blessing that is coming right now right now because our God is a right now our God is a right now When you move, such an easy thing for you to do Cause your hand is moving right now And you are still showing up at the tomb of every Lazarus Cause your voice is calling me out Cause right now, I know you're able and love You never lost a battle No, you never lost a battle And I know, I know You never will Yeah Yeah Ooh. Hey Now everything is possible By the power of the Holy Ghost A new wind is blowing around in my heart of stone Take it over like you said Never lost a battle. 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 Never lost
never lost a battle. Come on, he never lost a battle. No, he never will. He never will. He never lost a battle. He never lost a battle. He never lost a battle. He's never lost my battle. He never lost a battle. He never lost my battle. He never will. Come on, he never lost a battle. Let heaven hear you. Never lost a battle. Let heaven hear you. Come on.
We forget about ourselves, Lord. And we focus on you, God. For you are the center of our joy, Lord. You're the center.
worship you. I live to 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 worship you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the grace you have given us to be in your presence. Our God, full of mercy and full of grace, we humble ourselves before you. Cleanse us and purify us as we stand before you. Glorify yourself amongst us, O Lord. Cause your name to be lifted in our lives, O Father. Today, may we receive the portion you have ordained for us. Everyone that is here presently and those who are online and even those who will watch this later, May we receive what you have ordained for us. Lord Jesus, cause your face to shine upon us. Cause your spirit to rest upon us. That every mountain and every river will be made into a straight path. Make a way where there is no way for us tonight, O oh Father. We thank you that you are our God and you hear us. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. amen. Clap your hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. You can clap a little better. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can I feel like the hallelujahs on this side. I don't know about Hallelujah. Touch your neighbor, say neighbor. Neighbor. You are blessed to sit next to me. You are blessed to sit next to me. Say neighbor. Neighbor. You are blessed to sit next to me. You are blessed to sit next to me. Neighbor. Neighbor. You are blessed to see me. You are blessed to see me. As you see me. As you see me. May you see your miracle. May you see your miracle. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, uh, I feel like your conviction is small. Hallelujah. Your conviction is small. Hey. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Find a neighbor that will believe your sight is, your appearance is their miracle. Find somebody else to speak to. Say neighbor. Neighbor. As you see me. As you see me. May you see your miracle. May you see your miracle. Ah, neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. Neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. As you see me. As you see me. May your miracle be tangible. May your miracle be tangible. May your miracle be definite. May your miracle be in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. Huh. I feel like a lot of Josephs have gathered. Yes. Yeah. Favored people have gathered. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, I believe that... Um, God is doing something new in all of us. Amen. Uh, don't let anybody convince you otherwise. Amen. God is working on something in us, for us, and through us. Amen. Amen. And that thing will manifest around us. Amen. Despite what things look like, know that God is doing something Amen. special for you. Amen. And your Amen. ability to hold on to that and to believe that yeah. will cause you to see everything that God has ordained I for you. Receive it. 
Hallelujah. Luke chapter 9 from verse number 1 to 6. Today we're going to do boom, bang, bang, bada boom, bang, bang. And by the mercies of God, we will prophesy and be done. Amen, amen. Maybe the overflow are ready for prophecy. Amen. You know one thing I've noticed, the overflow is sweet with prophecy more than in here. The main sanctuary is too complacent now. You see, I can't even hear you shouting. The overflow is shouting. I don't think you have learned something about God. God loves noise. Let me explain to you. Let, let me explain to you something. And at some point I will teach about it. The Bible says, if I don't have love, anything I do is noise. But when you have love, you still have to make noise that is called a joyful noise. Amen. Because regardless, you'll be noisy. Amen. But there is a noise that God appreciates. Yes. When you see your destiny established, you see your future. Hallelujah. There is something that happens to you. Yes. And that is the prophetic sound. Uh, Ah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hmm, God is good. Amen. God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you there? Yes. You know, I, for, for once, I have an excuse for wear, to wear such a nice jacket when it's cold. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Somebody told me, Prophet, you look like you're going to Alaska. I said, this one is too cold for me. <laughs> I, I'm, I have tropical blood. I don't like this cold thing. It's too much for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Now let's read it together. One, two, three. Then he called his 12 disciples together mm -hmm. and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And he said unto them, take nothing for your journey, neither stays nor script nor bread, neither money, neither have two coats apiece. And whatsoever house ye enter into, there abide, and thence depart. And whosoever will not receive you, when ye go out of that city, shake off the very dust from your feet for a testimony against them. And they departed and went through the towns, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may sit in heavenly places. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, you may sit, but don't sit on your mouth. Neighbor, you may sit, but don't sit on your mouth. I can't hear you. Neighbor, you may sit, but don't sit on your mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I am excited to speak to you tonight uh, with the message that the Lord ministered to me. And I believe that it will be a blessing for us and it will take us to where God wants us to be. As always, whenever we stand to speak to you, we don't stand on our own accord, but it is by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Believe me, there are other things we could have been doing, but when God calls you, you drop everything and you go because it is in God's calling that there is life and there is purpose. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're not clapping, you're jealous, but it's okay. When we are where God wants us to be, life makes sense. Touch your neighbor, say, when you are where God wants you to be. When you are where God wants you to be. Life makes sense. Life makes sense. Now hear me by the Spirit of God and understand this, that there is uh, something that God does in our lives when God places a calling on us. There is a difference between being called and being assigned to an assignment. Whenever God calls you, he puts you in a place to prepare you. And when after he prepares you, he releases you for an assignment. Now, the issue is, the Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. Because some people fall off in the time of preparation. Uh, before you even are sent out, there are those who fall out simply because they become comfortable with the blessing of God. You see, when God calls you in the beginning, life is easy. 
life is sweet everything is working out you are ready to praise God you are ready to glorify God you are ready to run after God you are ready to point out to everybody how much you love Jesus because simply at that moment you are simply in the beginning of your journey but I want you to understand that the spirit of revelation is only released when there is trouble uh, if there is no problems, there is no revelation. Amen. Whenever God wants, I feel like preaching tonight. Amen. Amen. When God wants to lift you and wants to take you somewhere, God must create and orchestrate problems for you in order for you to receive the spirit of revelation. Because the spirit of revelation is the key that makes you to see God in a new light. And when you see God with a new light, you are lifted to another dimension. Now with revelation comes elevation. Whenever there is no revelation, there cannot be elevation. And revelation is only received when you have gone through something in your life. Revelation is not received when you are praying and everything is good. This is why a lot of people who are complacent in their walk with God can never receive anything new from God. So when they see you prophesying, they see you healing the sick, they call it witchcraft because they are still in the place of comfort. They have not needed anything so they cannot see why God should heal people. But if you have gone through sickness, you know the need to be healed. Yeah. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Now understand this by the Holy Spirit, I pray you. That revelation comes out of desperation. When you are desperate for God, when you are burning for God, when you are in a situation that only God can come through for you, you dig deep and you begin to seek Him. And when you begin to seek Him, you enter into the realm of revelation. Hallelujah. Now many cannot receive revelation because you are complacent where you are. When God blesses you, you are willing to remain in the place of the blessing and you're not ready to go from glory to glory because you're comfortable where you are. But in order there to be another glory, the glory that you have must be taken away. And if it is not taken away, then you cannot receive a greater glory. Because tomorrow's glory is not yesterday's glory. Amen. Yesterday's... Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Teach prophet. Hallelujah. I feel like I'm talking to myself. You see... God does not add on the glory. God must take away what is of old and give you something new. If there is no something new, there is no new glory. In order for God to elevate you, he must first remove what was there before. But the issue is many of you, when God wants to lift you, if God takes the former glory, you think God has taken away the substance of the spirit that he gave to you. This is why some of you cry when certain friends leave you because you think those friends define you but you don't understand that you define those who are around you. Hallelujah. I feel like I'm talking to myself. When God wants to lift you, He will take certain relationships away. Your husband may go away. Your wife may go away. But the issue is you defined yourself by what you have and not what God has placed in you. Come on. I feel like I, 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 I don't know if I'm speaking to somebody. You are not your job. You are not your career. You are not what you went to school for. You are what God wants you to be. Amen. And what Jesus has called you to be is what you are. And that thing does not have to do with anything material. Uh, sit for two seconds. We are going somewhere. Touch your neighbor. Say, neighbor, we are going somewhere. Neighbor, we are going somewhere. You see... Unless you comprehend this, if you look at God, none of you can see God. Uh, I feel like I'm talking to myself. Teaching. We have seen manifestations of God, which is seeing God, but nobody has seen God except Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son. And He's the one that reveals the Father to everybody else. But when we look at creation... We say all oh, this belongs to God. But you can see wicked people also having those things that we know belong to God. 
But just because a wicked person may be prospering does not stop God from being God. It doesn't change who God is. If anything, it shows his greatness that even the wicked can try to take what is his, but they will die and leave it for the righteous. I feel like I'm talking to myself. There is a new level God is taking you to. Amen. There is a new dimension Jesus is about to lift you to. If you will shout amen, then he will come upon you. If you will shout glory, then he will come upon you. Uh, sit down for two seconds. Now, 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 when, when God puts you through the process, God will start small. Uh, God will start small. Touch your neighbor, say, God will start small. God will start small. I can hear you. Find another neighbor, say, neighbor, God will start small, small. Neighbor, God will start small, small. In the beginning, God will start small, small to see your ability to hang on him. You see, some of you, God wanted to send you to make you a sent one. But your ability to be comfortable caused God to orchestrate your own brothers and sisters to sell you into slavery. Uh, to betray you, to insult you, to turn against you. So that you can be pushed into the greater that God has. Amen. Come on. Come on you teaching? I feel like this message is for those who are on this side. Too good, prophet. Uh, are you sure you're here? We are here. God will orchestrate. You see, when God wants you, when you are, the Bible says our life is hidden in Christ and in God. This is why Satan had to visit God and ask him, and God asked him, where have you been? He said, you know me, I've just been walking around, strolling around, you know, doing my thing. And God asked him, have you seen Job? Notice it is God highlighting Job because God wants to remove Job from his comfort zone and push him into his glory zone. Uh, come on, come on. Come on. Come on are, you, are you sure you're here with me? Yes. I go to 1 Corinthians very quickly. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Uh, let me find this uh, quickly. Uh, I feel like I'm talking to myself. Uh, you teach Look at your neighbor. Say you're about to be pushed to your glory zone. You're about, about to, to be pushed, pushed to your glory zone. I can't hear you. You're about, about to be pushed to your glory zone. Uh, I can't hear you. You are about to be pushed to your glory zone. I think you need to find another neighbor that will respond to you. You are about to be pushed to your glory zone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6, listen to what it says. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world. You see, when God is dealing with you, he does not deal with the wisdom of the world. God will not uh, uh, promote you the way the world promotes you. You see, the beautiful thing about God is this. Those who started before you will not be paid more than you just because you came later. Um, because the vineyard is the Lord's. Yeah. Just because they went ahead of you doesn't mean they're... Yeah. Because God does not move like the world moves. Amen. God has his own system. That even though you started early does not mean you get more. That's true. You get more based on your reliance on his grace. Amen. Mm, catch this. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that comes to nothing. Verse 7. Listen to this. But we speak the wisdom of God. You see, when God speaks to you, he shares his wisdom. God does not share man's perspective. God does not share your brother's perspective, Amen. your friend's perspective. Amen. You see, your friends, when you go down, their perspective will be you sinned against God. You betrayed God. You don't pray enough. But that is not the wisdom of God. The Bible says that they looked at Jesus and they called him accursed. Yet it was the wisdom of God to deliver the world. So good. I, I feel like somebody can't hear me. So God's way, God's wisdom when it's communicated to you, 
it's a little bit strange. Touch your neighbor, say, God's wisdom can be strange. God's wisdom can be strange. I can't hear you say, God's wisdom can be strange. God's wisdom can be strange. Because he doesn't speak like you and me, so the way he will communicate will be different because how he sees things, how he perceives things, the way he has established things, don't operate the way the rules of men do. Mm, I wish you could hear me. So look at this as we go deeper. Watch this. He says, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. So there is a wisdom that God has ordained. That wisdom concerns you. And remember, wisdom is the application of knowledge. Meaning wisdom is strategy. Touch your neighbor, say strategy. strategy. I can't hear you touch another neighbor, say wisdom is strategy. Wisdom is strategy. I think you can say better. Find somebody, tell them wisdom is strategy. Wisdom is strategy. So there is a certain strategy that God has established from the beginning. The issue is when that wisdom is communicated to you, you crumble and you fear because you depend on you and not the God that has sent you. Ah, I feel like I'm by myself. This is why the Bible says, if you keep reading, it says, I had not seen, nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of men, the things which God has prepared for those that love him. It means that those whom God loves are not aware of what God has prepared for them because they are not in the spirit of revelation. Because when you read the next verse, Paul says, but we know these things because they have been revealed to us. Somebody shout revelation. Revelation. This is why you are in Revelation Church. Amen. Amen. Because God will make sense of what is going on with you. Amen. Uh, I feel like you can't hear me. Amen. So take me back. Take me back to where I was, please. Take me back to, 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 take me back to Luke. Take me back to Luke, please. We are going somewhere. Teaching great. We are going somewhere. Touch your neighbor, say, we are going somewhere. We're going somewhere. Go to verse 2. Go to verse 2 quickly. Look at this. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Verse 3. And he said unto them, take nothing for your journey. <laughs> you see, you can never know that Jehovah Jireh exists until you take nothing for your journey. Uh, I feel like, let me find somebody I can preach to. Too good. Are you preaching this Notice, he did not say, uh, gather what you can have before I sent you. He did not say, work your job before I can send you. He did not say, you know, do your best before I can send you. He did not say, have a plan before I sent you. When God sends you and he gives you a mission and he gives you a plan, you will not have resources to cover it. Come on. I feel like I'm talking to somebody in the house. Talking to us. No, I think I'm talking to the wrong people. If, you're, if I'm talking to you, shout fire. Fire! Uh, cap capture this by the Spirit. Uh, when God selects you, when you pass the preparation ground, and you say, Lord, I will hold on to you, God says, you really want to follow me. I want to reveal my glory through you. I want to put my glory upon you. I want men and women to look at you and to see me. Now, in order for them to see me, I'm going to send you out with nothing. Ah, I feel like somebody can hear me. If you are in the church right now and you're saying, Lord, what you gave me to do, I have nothing then that is a guarantee that he has sent you to do that thing. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I feel like this message is for the overflow. Yes. You see, when Jesus, they came and asked him, they said, Lord, where do you stay? He said, listen, foxes have holes. Birds have nests. The son of man doesn't have anything like that. But if you want, follow me. Yes, Lord. They were like, what? But whenever they had a need, Jesus would say, hey, go catch a fish. There is gold. That's it. Because Jesus wanted to show them, you don't need a job to follow me. Hallelujah. I can give you gold. Hallelujah. 
without you having to work for it. I can multiply bread when you... So without a need, there is no revelation. Huh? Touch your neighbor, say, without a need, there is no revelation. Without a need, there is no revelation. I can't hear you. Look at your neighbor, say, without a need, there is no revelation. Without a need, there is no revelation. The problem with you all is that you, you, you don't want to, you see, life, the Bible called, the, 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 not only the Bible, but even in the secular world, we know that we are, you know, the Bible says, not, not the Bible, I don't know why I'm saying the Bible, but maybe because I'm in the spirit. But listen to this. Listen to what we usually sing. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. Life, Life is but a dream. Life, you are on a river, not in an ocean. You are sailing on a river. Why are you sailing on a river? Because your destination is already set. Come on. A person on a river doesn't need a compass. The water is just. Your teaching good. This is too good. Your issue is you're trying to sail the opposite direction, yet the river is flowing a certain direction. And many of you cannot let go of water under the river. Meaning that what God forgave and he let go, you don't want to let go. Yet it is already under the waters of waters. Amen. The Bible says God will forgive your sin and bury them deep under the waters. That you will not remember them. Not in the ground, waters. Because when you look at water, you cannot distinguish. Mm, can somebody hear me? Yes. But many of you, when God sends you, you are so married to what no longer has substance. Come on. <laughs> you are so engaged with what broke you down, with what betrayed you. Yet that relationship is dead, but you have entangled yourself. You are not ready to let go, so therefore you cannot receive what God has for you. Because for God to show you what he has for you, he must take away what you have. What he gave you will no longer be any good for your next dimension. Amen. You see, whenever God wants to lift you, that which you have was good for where you were. But it is not good for your next dimension. Amen. When Jesus was born among men, he carried a body that was fit for this life. But after going through tribulations and after being killed on the cross, when they buried him and they thought that he was dead, Jesus resurrected with a different body. It had the re re resemblance of the past, but it was not the past body. The past body, when you pierced it, it died. This body could walk with scars. Yeah. I feel like I'm talking to myself. This body no longer needed blood because all the blood was given to men. Yes. I feel like... Yeah. Are you sure you're still here? Here. Are you sure you're still here? Yes. This was a different body that was no longer bound. Was no longer subject to the laws of men. The reason why bills are still whooping you and you are sleepless about them is because you have not learned to leave them in God's hands. So because you have not decided to say, you know what? Even if I worry about it, I can't do anything about it. Father, provide a way out and I am going to rest Amen. and wait on you. Amen. But because you cannot do that, you cannot receive the new body that is the body of wealth. Uh, let me talk to somebody that is about to enter into their millions, their billions. I receive it. Some of you, because you have experienced so much failure, 
too much failure. Over and over failure. Your mother failed, your father failed, your sister failed. You are just used to failure after failure. In Africa, they will say you are a failure. You are used to failures on failures. It's, it's more painful than failure. That still sounds classy. You are a failure. You know it's bad. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> you are so accurate accustomed to failure that you have programmed the defense of your life based on failure when God blesses you you cannot give to God because you are anticipating being broke tomorrow mm. oh. I think I poked somebody somewhere You are so used to disappointment on disappointment that when God sends somebody for you to help you, you compare them to your ex, 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 ex. Because every ex that came in your life betrayed you. So God sends you help, you mistake them for... Come on. Come on, prophet. I feel like I should go to overflow. I feel... You are so used to everyone breaking your heart that if God sends a helper to help you lift you up you bury your pain within yourself you fall into depression you are used to your mother your father suffering witchcraft that when you get a slight headache your first instinct is a demon is sitting on my head yet maybe you just did not drink enough water Maybe you just did not eat. Amen. But because the devil has helped you to program you to be so demon-minded, everything is a demon. I came to tell you that the devil is a liar. Amen. The Amen. devil, his brothers and sisters are a liar. Yeah. Don't allow yourself to fall into the trap of being programmed by demons. That everything about you is suffering. Mm -hmm. You see, the disciples of Jesus were left in, uh, I believe, in the book of Matthew somewhere. I believe I have it somewhere. The Lord gave it to me. I believe it's uh, 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 Matthew something. Matthew 14, 23 uh, to 33. Let's read it quickly. Matthew 14 from verse 23. Now look at this. Somebody say divine setup. Divine setup. I can't hear you. Divine setup. Look at your neighbor say, it's a divine setup. It's a divine setup. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. Uh -huh. Whenever you feel alone, know that it is a setup. You are not alone. Amen, amen. Amen. I feel like I'm not talking to the right people. There is somebody asking, Lord, where are you? Whenever you get to that place where you say, Lord, where are you? Know that he set you up to reveal himself. Amen. Amen. Uh, maybe this is for overflow, those who are online. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea. <laughs> Notice, he left them to pray and they were in the boat. Before they know it, they were in the midst of the sea. They found themselves in the middle of a situation. With waves tossing them left and right. Because the wind was contrary to where the boat was going. Everything began to be shaken. Water started falling into the boat and the boat became in a situation whereby they may end up being shipwrecked or they may sink. They started saying, Jesus must have left us. He prophesied that we are going to drown and he said, I'm not going to be with these ninjas. Let them die on their own. They started blaming God saying, God, where are you? How could you forsake us? How could you leave us in this situation? Verse 25. Mm, this is going somewhere. 
And in the fourth watch, notice Jesus left them until the first watch, the second watch, the third watch. On the fourth watch, <laughs> Jesus went unto them. <laughs> when it feels like there is no hope, that is when Jesus comes unto you. Amen. Amen. Let me find somebody I can preach to. Mama Ghana, when you feel like there is no hope, it is when Jesus makes his grand entrance. You see, our God is a God that wants to make sure you can see him. When he comes, he wants you to make sure you can see him. Because when he comes, darkness will be shocked. Where did you come from? Because his help comes from mysterious places. And it comes in mysterious ways. <laughs> So when God shows up to deliver you, your enemies that were anticipating for you to die will be the same ones that will sing your praises. Amen. They will worship your God and say, I don't know how we came out of this. Yes. Because the light shineth in darkness and... Yes. Hey. So Jesus abandoned them and set them up. Somebody say it's a divine setup. It's a divine setup. Uh, I can't hear you say it's a divine setup. It's a divine setup. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's a divine setup. Neighbor, it's a divine setup. Listen to me and listen to me by the Spirit of God. Your life is hidden in Christ and in God. Everything happening in your life, God is the one that allowed Satan to come. Is the one that highlighted you to Satan. You see, Satan was not even thinking about Job. It is God that asked him, where have you been to see if he passed by where Job was? He was like, Lord, you know me. I've been roaming around the world. And God said, wow, really? Have you seen Job? He said, yeah, of course. I have seen Job. Have you seen those who are in Revelation Church? Satan says, of course. Come on. Come on. Maybe it's not you. Maybe it's not you, but it's me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is why you are in church praying, fasting, worshiping, giving, doing everything that you can. And you're like, why am I under so much attack? Why is it that the devil keeps coming after me? Why are things in my life so shaken? Why is it that people keep turning against me? Why is it that people keep coming after me? Why is it that people keep fighting against me? Lord, what is wrong with me? Listen to me, there is nothing wrong with you. It is a divine setup to set you up to Hallelujah. enter into your glory. Hallelujah. Ah, look at your neighbor say it is a divine setup. It is it a is divine, divine setup. setup. You see, when God wants to be involved in your life, he will do what he did with Moses. He said, Moses, go unto Pharaoh. Tell him, let my people go. And remember, the yes of God, nobody can say no. And the no of God, nobody can say yes. God sends Moses to Pharaoh and he goes up and marches before Pharaoh and says, Pharaoh, the Lord God of Israel says, let my people go. And when he said, let my people go, the same God that sent him hardened the heart of Pharaoh in order to resist him. Your resistance is not a spirit of limitation. Your resistance... Come on, come on, come on. it's so good. Ah, uh, let me, let me push it a little further. Your resistance is not the devil when God has sent you. It is the same God that is trying to prove you. So he will make the devil throw his best shot at you. So that when he lifts you to another dimension, the devil will have nothing for you. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, somebody didn't hear what I said. Somebody of you need to look at Satan and say, the devil, devil, you need to give me your best shot. Because when the devil gives you his best shot, it is at that time that the Holy Spirit lifts a standard against the enemy. And when he lifts a standard, the devil understands that he's out of your league. Yes. Yes. 
The devil understands that he's out of your league. Yeah. That you are above him and not under him. Yeah. The devil lets go of you and he begins to send a memo to all his demons. Oh. Ah, when you see prophet EJ, leave him alone. Yeah. If you see Wes, leave him alone. If you see Armstrong Masengo, leave him alone. Oh. If you see Apostle Gershon, leave him alone. Yeah. Uh, when you see them, leave them alone because they have already overcome. Hallelujah. These ones are on another level. They have risen. I prophesy to you. I, pro hey. I prophesy to you. You are being lifted to another dimension. Yeah. Uh, if you believe this, shout fire seven times. Fire. Ah, your joy is too small. I feel like the overflow has more joy. I feel like YouTube has more joy. Ah, are you still here? Please sit for two seconds. We don't have too much time. We don't have too much time. You see... Today morning I went to spar because I'm back to working out and training. Yeah. And when you are in the when you're in there with some of the best people, when they realize they cannot hit you, they get frustrated. Because every time they throw their best shot, you dodge it and you counter them. Instead of pushing forward, they begin to push back and they begin to become timid. And they enter into a defensive mode because they realize your skill level is beyond their own level. Come on, come on. When Satan comes after you, he doesn't throw his best shot until he thinks that he got you. So God has to make it appear like the devil got you. Come on. Come on. Uh, let, me, let me talk to somebody on this side. Because you are too calm for me. I don't know about them. I don't know about them. but uh, yeah. God has to make you look like he got you. You see, when Jesus sent them two by two to go and preach, he told them, don't take anything. The reason why he said don't take anything is because he wanted men to undermine them. And he wanted Satan also to undermine them. But Jesus told them, listen, what I have given you is spiritual substance. Wherever you will go, whoever receives you, release your blessing with them. It means you carry the blessing within your spirit and the blessing doesn't always translate to material things until you pass the test. When you remain obedient unto the end, then you see the results Amen. of what God put inside of you. Amen. So when God says go without resources, he will send people to resist you. Jesus told them, he said, whoever receives you leave your blessing and whoever rejects you wipe your foot judge them you see some of you you are being given a chance to put judgment on certain people that will already betray you so that when you enter into your glory they have no power of hallelujah you see judas was a plan of God and his son Jesus together. Jesus went and found his Judas. Judas never betrayed Jesus. Jesus chose him to betray him so that he can end up on the cross and save you and me and so that he may resurrect. You see, when God is doing a divine setup, he's also setting up your enemies that don't know. Uh, are, are you sure you're here? Yes. So when you're in your genesis, is the time that your eyes are open. You can begin to say, yeah. Mm, 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 mm. You see, not everyone that is your friend is really a friend. And not every relative is family. Amen. Mm hmm 
I feel like I'm talking to myself. Amen. Cyber is right. Not every relative is family. Just because you came out of the same womb, you share the same blood, they are just a relative, not family. Uh -huh. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Loyalty makes family. Blood only makes you relatives. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me. You need to see those who are loyal to you before God can lift you. Amen. Because you are fighting two battles. You are fighting a spiritual battle and you are fighting a physical battle. The physical battle is in discerning who is really for you. Spiritual battles are easy because you say in the name of Jesus and it is done. But the physical battle can be difficult because you have to understand who is there truly indeed for you. Who is really there for you? Who is ready to walk with you? So when God gives you a vision, God gives you a dream, God gives you the anointing, he gives you the presence, he gives you the power. But the power is waiting for the opportunity and that opportunity has nothing to do with men. It has everything to do with you and your positioning in Christ. You see, the anointing does not work independent of God's will. Unless there is an issue, there is no need for the anointing. Because the anointing was given so that yokes can be broken. So whenever you are anointed, there must be a yoke present. Amen. If there is no yoke, there is no need for the anointing. So if God wants to lift you, he must allow a certain yoke to be in your life. In order to prove the presence of the anointing. Ah, uh, we are going somewhere. Sit down for two seconds. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. <laughs> While the waves and the waters are tossing them back and forth, Jesus shows up. And the Bible says this, <laughs> verse 26. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled you see when god shows up sometimes you will be troubled why were they troubled listen to what they say saying it is a spirit they were so used to their problem that when the presence of god showed up they thought jesus was a demon it's good they missed it i don't know who i should talk to they saw so much trouble that when they saw a man walking on the sea coming to them, their first instinct was like, this is the demon that has been troubling our life. He has now appeared physically to destroy us. Some of you, this is where you are. You are suffering, God says, go to Revelation Church, you say, that person is healing people, delivering people, restoring people. He must be using witchcraft. Why are you saying it's witchcraft? Because you are so used to demonic possession. You are so used to a certain mindset. Amen. You cannot understand that Satan cannot cast out Satan. The devil cannot bless you. He is not interested in that. The devil will never point you to Jesus Christ. The only way, the truth, and the salvation of all mankind. Yeah. But because your mind is so used to troubles, you went to Bishop So, you gave, nothing happened. I am not Bishop So, I am Prophet Lovi Elias. And when you give here, you're not giving to me. You're giving to Jesus. You're giving to God. Amen. If you look at me, I don't need it. Are, are you listening to what I'm saying? So now your definition of everything is based on the bad that has happened to you. And not the good that God has ordained for you. 
So just like the children of Israel, when Moses said, let my people go and God hardened the heart of Pharaoh. They looked at Moses because Pharaoh had said, now you guys are going to have to produce twice as much of what we produce. We will not make this provision for you. You will do it yourselves. They turned to Moses and said, Moses, go back where you came from. When, we came, when you came here, you showed us signs we believed. But now we believe Satan has sent you because our condition is worse than before. But I'm here to tell you that when you feel like the word of God has come and things have become worse, understand that God is launching you further so he has to push you. Amen. 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 The father is... The deeper the prophetic word, the greater the trouble. Hallelujah. Uh, sit down for two seconds. When God says, I will do wonderful things for thee. <laughs> Understand that there will be a period of being launched. And everything that will be launched must first be pulled back. Good, good. If you're going to be a thousand there, you will move like this. Come on. When God said, I will make you a millionaire, he will pull you like this. I receive it. When he says, I will make you a billionaire, he will pull. I receive it. It will seem like your money is decreasing. It will feel like the dream God gave you is even further. Lord, you said you will heal my body to serve you, but look at my body right now. It is breaking down. How can you minister healing if you have never been healed? <laughs> All these things are divine setups. But in order for you to enter into it, you have to allow waters under the rivers to pass. You have to let the past be the past. Because as long as you hold on to the past, you are not going anywhere. But you are making the battle harder than it should. Your greatest battle is not against demons because those ones are under our feet. Your greatest battle is entering into the understanding. Your greatest battle is entering into the understanding of what God wants to do with you. When God wants to do something for you, what he gave you before was good for before. What he gave you yesterday was good for yesterday. This is why when God wanted to give the children of Israel manna, he told them, you don't need to save anything. Every morning I will deliver fresh for you. You cannot go from glory to glory unless something new is released. Amen. So this is the reason why you need to be calm and sober. Amen. You need to be what? Calm and sober. Your eyes need to be open. Your eyes need to be set on him and understand that, Father, you are orchestrating something in my life. I may not understand it right now, but I want to understand it. Open my eyes to see. You see, uh, it, is, it is revelation comes when you choose to see God. Not let him just surprise me. No, 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 no. God will put you in situations and that situation will determine what name you will know him by. You see, every name of God is a manifestation within a situation. The reason why you cannot know him by that name is because when you are supposed to march forward, when something happens, you dodge and you run back to where it's comfortable. 
But the Lord came and spoke to me to speak to you that no matter what the situation is, keep marching forward. Amen, no amen. matter how difficult things are, keep marching forward. Amen. No matter how much rejection you face, keep marching forward. I feel like I'm preaching to myself. No matter how difficult things get, no matter how much betrayal you face, yes. keep marching forward. Ah, uh, it is because of poverty that you will know Jehovah Jireh. Yes. It is because of sickness you will know Jehovah Rapha. Yes. What name will you know him by if you stop? Every name of God is a revelation. Every name of God. <laughs> Every name of God is pure revelation. Where there is no revelation, there is no praise. Where there is no revelation, there is no worship. Where there is no revelation, there is no reverence for God. Where there is revelation, listen to what the Bible says. Anyone that is to come to him, he must know that he is. That what he is, is a revelation. Because what he is to me may not be what he is to you. Amen. Must know that he is, and he is the rewarder. What is the reward that you will get? It's according to the name you know. What is the revelation you have? What is the revelation you have? When you come to him, who do you know him to be? When Moses met him, Moses met Jehovah, the Lord. He met the great I am. To him, nothing is impossible. He can part the seas. He can make a way where there is no way. Yes. How do you know him? How do you know him? By what name do you know him? By what name do you know him? What is the revelation you're carrying? Revelation is not corporate. That is why you pray, Jehovah Jireh, my provider, you're still broke. Because you're calling him by a name somebody else called him based on his experience. Instead of you also persevering so that you find him and say, Jehovah Trillionaire. Because... Let me find somebody that is ready. That is on this side, brother. You need to find him and know his name for yourself. I have always called God something. I always call him Jehovah Sneaky. Because I discovered when things are going south, I know that God is being sneaky about something. So I turn and I say, Lord, what are you doing? Are you getting ready to bless me again? And the Lord looks at me and says, yes, son, you know me too well. That is why I cannot fail. I move from glory to glory because I have discovered him. What is the name? Touch your neighbor, say, neighbor, what is the name? What is the name? I can't hear you. Shake your neighbor, say, neighbor, what is the name? Neighbor, what is the name? I want you to find another neighbor. Say, neighbor, what is the name? Neighbor, what is the name? When we needed salvation, he came from heaven as Yeshua. Yahweh saves. Every name was because of a trouble that somebody was going through. What is your trouble today? What is your difficulty today? What is bothering you today? What is troubling you today? What is pressing on you today? I'm here to encourage you to call on Jesus. No matter how difficult it is, don't stop calling on Jesus. Amen. I want you to touch your neighbor say, don't stop calling on Jesus. Don't stop calling. No matter how difficult it gets, don't stop calling on Jesus. Uh, I want you to high five somebody and tell them call on Jesus. Call on Jesus. When things are good, call on Jesus. Call on Jesus.
When things are difficult, call on Jesus. When things are shaky, call on Jesus. When your boat is being tossed left and right, call on Jesus. Don't stop calling on Jesus. I want you to start lifting your voice and start calling on Jesus. Lift your voice and begin to call on Jesus. Pray, say, Jesus, save me. Say, Jesus, heal me. Jesus, deliver me. Jesus, turn my situation around. I am calling on you, Jesus. I am calling on you, Jesus. Lift up your voice and begin to pray and call on his name. calling on you, Lord. Jesus, 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 save me. Jesus, I'm calling on you. Jesus, as everything is being turned around, I'm calling on you. Jesus. I can't hear you calling on his name. Call on his name. Call on his name. Cry to him on his name. Say, Lord, I need you. I am desperate for a revelation. I am desperate for a revelation. I want a revolution in my life. I want elevation in my life. I want restitution in my life. Oh, Jesus, call on his name. Call on his name. Lord, I need you. Lord, Don't let your past hold you from calling his name. Don't let your difficult times hold you from calling on his name. Is it addiction? Call on his name. Is it frustration? Call on his name. Don't stop calling on his name. Jesus. Jesus. I'm desperate for you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. Call on his name. Call on his name. Lift up your voice and call on his name. Lift up your voice and call on his name. Lift up your voice and call on his name. Lift up your voice and call on his name. Lift up your voice and call on his name. Lift up your voice and call on his name. Don't give up, 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 call on his name. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. The greater the trouble, the more you have to call on his name. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Hey, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Pray calling on his name. Say, Lord, you can do all things. Lord, you can do all things. Jesus, I need you. I need a revelation. 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 Oh, Jesus. I need a revelation, Lord. Somebody cry unto him. Somebody cry unto him. Cry unto him like you have never cried before. I need a revelation. I need Pray and call on his name. 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 Cry, Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I need you. In the midst of the storm, I need you. Jesus, I need you. You are my savior. You are my deliverer. Jesus, I need you. Somebody shout unto him. Cry unto him. You are my healer. You are my savior. In the middle of the storm, always and forever, you are my savior, Jesus, I need you. Keep crying unto him. I cry out to you, Lord. Lift up your voice. 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 Cry out to you, Lord Jesus. Cry unto him. I cry out to you, Lord Jesus. Lift up your voice. I need you, Lord Jesus. 
Lift up your voice. I need you, Lord Jesus. I need you, Lord Jesus. I need you, Lord. You are my Savior. You are my resurrection. You are the revelation that I need. You are my Savior in the midst of the storm. Lift up your voice. You are my Savior Call now and forever. Jesus. Call I need Jesus. you, Lord Jesus. Jesus, you're my healer. Call on his name. Cry unto him. Call on his name. Cry Jesus. Cry Jesus. Cry Jesus. Call on his name. 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 Say Jesus. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. I need you, Lord. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Jesus name. Jesus name lift your hands to him call on him with all your heart call on him with all your heart say Lord Jesus rescue me say Lord Jesus redeem me Lord Jesus help me you are my hope and my salvation without you I can do nothing Lift up your voice and begin to call on him. Call on him to come for you. You are my only hope. You are my only salvation, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, rescue me. Lord Jesus, rescue me. Lord Jesus, you are my only hope. You are my only salvation, Lord Jesus. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Every step of the way, Father. I'm a 
Clap your hands to the Lord Jesus. Listen to me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, give me the strength to push forward. No matter the situation, no matter the difficulty, Holy Spirit, give me the strength to persevere that I may receive the blessing that I may receive the goal that I may receive what you have prepared for me in Jesus mighty name lift up your voice and begin to pray I can hear you praying lift your voice and pray Jesus name. Jesus name always remember these children of God you speak to him he will speak to me Amen. I don't know anything unless he speaks to me Amen. I am no different than you I am exactly like you hey baby boy how are you doing <laughs> I am exactly like you when you talk to him he will talk to me and I will talk to you Amen. and remember just because I haven't ministered to you prophetically doesn't mean he has not touched you Amen. <laughs> Are you listening to me? Amen. Yes. He's doing this to show you that he's in the place. Amen. He's using a weak human being. A, 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 a weak human being. Somebody that, a tool that he can use to reveal something for you to believe. Amen. I am not anybody's answer. I will never be. Only Jesus is the answer. Amen. I am relying on him even more than you in order to hear from him. Amen. To minister to you. Begin to call on Jesus, call on Jesus, call on Jesus, call on Jesus. Lift your hands, call on Jesus. Jesus, just as you helped her, just as you helped many families, Lord, thank you for helping my family. Lord, thank you for helping me. Lord, thank you for knowing my situation. 
Lord, thank you for being able to turn it around. Thank you for being a deliverer of my house. Thank you for being a deliverer of all things, oh Lord Jesus. Of all those connected, oh Lord, to me and to my family, oh Lord Jesus. Thank you, oh Father. Thank you, oh Father. That if it is to be done, only you will. If it is to be done, only you can. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Your name is too sweet not to say it, oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I call upon your name. I call upon your name in public. I call upon your name in private. I call upon your name, oh Lord Jesus. Jesus name. Where is your hand? Lift your hand to Jesus. Ramandala ba 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 ba. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Listen, Jesus is alive. Amen. I said Jesus is alive. Amen. Jesus is extra, extra, extra alive. Amen. Jesus lives forever. Amen. And there is no other God and Lord except by Him. Amen. He is the only Lord. He is the only Savior. Amen. He is the only one that can do the impossible. Amen. These little things that you are seeing me do is just God. Showing his grace and his mercy to us. God is just so good to us. You, you understand what I'm saying? Imagine people are coming. It's like everyone I prophesied to there was actually from out of state and out of country. And personally, to be honest with you, if I don't like to prophesy to people that are in close proximity. Because my desire is always to show you that God can speak. Amen. 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 You know, there are people that don't believe God speaks. Yeah. They'll say he only speaks by the Bible. That's cool. We don't doubt it. It's true. That's why we preach the Bible. Amen. But if you think God is limited in the pages of a book, you're crazy. Ah, uh, Look, I didn't even hear Amen. Amen. a clap or anything like that. 
Listen, spiritual sight is real. Uh, this thing is real. Are you listening to me? Yes. This thing is real. A hundred percent. My prayer is always that God will just one day, while you are worshipping him and loving him, he will just touch your ear for you to hear the whispers of the spirit. He will change your life forever. Forever and ever and ever and ever. It will shift you. It will take you somewhere where you never knew. Sometimes me, myself, as a passenger, you know when God is using you, you're like a passenger. You're like a passenger. You're watching. And as you're watching, you're seeing all these things happen. It shocks you that he's speaking to you. It's actually shocking. <laughs> That's why I get excited when people see us going, yeah, because we are enjoying it as much as you. We are like Jesus. You are really speaking right now. Yes. He has made an escape for him. This is why children of God, you ought to pray for your family. Yes. You know, when I, when I, you know, uh, le let me tell you what the problem with the church is. This is, this is the thing with believers. They'll say, you're not God. You can't tell when somebody's going to die. That's not true. Which Bible do you people read? Right. Am I the one determining when he's going to die or God who created him is warning him? The last time I prophesied to the young boy who's doing so well right now. Amen. Changed his life completely. You see him, you won't even know he's the same person. Amen. When I told him that. Am I the one who created him? No. Oh. I am telling you what God is saying. Yes. Isaiah went to, what's his name, Ezekiel, who was it? He went to Ezekiel and told him, get your house in order, you're going to die. How did he know he was going to die? God told him. Yeah. When Micaiah was talking to the king, he told the king, listen, you go to this war, you will die. He said, no, lock him up until I come back. He said, if I be a prophet of God, you come back from this war. Then I'm not a prophet. Yeah. The person went and died. Yeah. I don't know why people think that God cannot tell you. You believe he can do everything, but only God can say when somebody is going to die. Of course, it's God speaking. Who else is speaking? Yeah. People think, pro you see, this is the different uh, prophet. I'm sorry to say this. This is the issue with you people who are used to giving words. You don't know prophecy. Yes. You are used to God is about to lift you. God is going to wipe your tears. God is going. That is good. It's still God speaking. But that is not prophecy. That is word of wisdom exhortation. You are lifting somebody up. Prophecy. What I'm doing right now. You lost your donkeys. I'm telling you they're in this corner, this way, this. I am correcting somebody's date. <laughs> that is prophecy. Not word of knowledge, prophecy. You are used to small boys and girls calling themselves prophets. You don't know genuine, born prophets. I am not saying they are not men and women of God, but there's levels to these things. Amen. And that level is determined by the grace that God chooses to give. I didn't choose to be able to do this. In fact, maybe those guys pray more than me. But I am a benefactor of grace. Amen. I am a benefactor of grace. Amen. I didn't work for it. I didn't pray for it. God was just sovereign enough to smile on me and to give it to me. Amen. For me to be able to help people. It's not something that I went pursuing or anything. No, it was never that. Some people don't know that I was a Grammy nominated producer. I was doing well in life. God came and told me, drop everything, go and do this. I told you this when you were six. I said, yes, sir. Do you know how many people looked at me like I was crazy? At the time, you're building the most. At the time, how could you do this? I said, God has called me. What can I do? And people think we're trying to take money from people. We are here saving souls. Amen. Look at how this mother's son just got saved. He will watch this and know like, how can this man know this? I need to stay away. This is grace. Don't confuse word of knowledge for prophecy. Amen. Word of knowledge gives you insight of certain things. Prophecy is God opens the book like this, tells you this is what happens and this is what will happen. This is what is going on, fix it here. Amen. 
Somebody shall prophesy. prophesy. It's called the angelic ministry. Amen. Amen. It's called the ministry of angels. Amen. When I tell you all that I, you think, you see, when you bring these pictures, listen to me. There's some things that are happening that are beyond what eyes can meet. Or what meets the eye, if I should say that correctly. Whenever I come to you and I look at you, there is some things that the Lord will show me that I never say anything because he hasn't told me to speak. Sometimes out of mercy I will speak, but you don't need to hear anything from me. That's the honest truth. You just need to believe. You see, the Bible says this. Believe God, you'll be established. Believe his prophets and you will prosper. The problem is this prosperity, people have only linked it to money. No. The Bible says, brethren, I pray above all that you may prosper even as your soul what? Prospers. So prosperity that comes from a prophet comes to strengthen you spiritually. Then your physical life also takes shape. Amen. When Peter was in prison and he went and knocked the door, they said, no, she said, Peter is at the door. They said, no, that, no, uh, that's Peter's angel. It means they had seen him. There are some of you that you think, remember that woman came from Atlanta. She said that you, you were, I was in a bar in 2000 and what? 2005. 2005. And you are preaching to me and you're telling me that you will look for me in a few years. And me, I have never even tasted alcohol. I don't even know what that is. I have never sat at a bar. Never, ever, 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 ever. But she saw me and she said, you spoke to me. You did. Convicted. But I'm laughing the whole time because I'm like, man, you guys have been busy. <laughs> when you have a dream that, oh, prophet appeared to me, it's not me. Sometimes God can actually take my spirit. But many times it's God himself using his angels to minister to you. Because he knows to you, you have never seen him. So for you, you can only associate him to his servant. So angels usually will take the form of a man you know in order to show you that it's God that visited you. Amen. May you receive angelic visitation, visitation. I receive. I receive. Somebody shout in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I'm going to tell you again, and I'm glad that his wife understood that he came and he said this notice angels will always point to the king of glory they will always point us to Jesus the son of the living God what a mighty testimony I always say this if we are to do all testimonies ah uh, <laughs> right now I don't know how many testimonies we have that we have but we have hand like over 500 testimonies recorded filmed that we are just waiting for the editors to catch up so that we can listen in this church we don't just prophesy and it was information people have t tangible testimonies amen we don't just talk oh god is no you you sit down and you're like ah what this man said happened <laughs> the man back there shout oh my gosh he's a real prophet <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> so I want you with faith to lift up pictures that you are holding. Those prayer requests you have that you're holding. May God bless you. I can't wait to see your wife. God is good. Clap for him as he goes. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Lift up what you have. Lift up what you have. Lift it up to Jesus. The Lord Jesus is our help. The Lord Jesus is our salvation. The Lord Jesus is our redeemer. The Lord Jesus is all we have. Without him, we are nothing. Without him, we can do nothing. It is all Jesus. It is all Jesus. I'll say it again. It is all who? Jesus. So as you lift your hands to him, those family members, I want you to know that as I pray for you, he is going to touch them. Even those who are at home. Notice this testimony happened to somebody in Nicaragua. Yes. 
<laughs> not even here. Father, as your people lift what they have, those who are here and even those who are at home, you know each and every one of them. You know their life. You know what brought them in your presence. You know, your, you know they're coming in, they're going out. Father of mercy, I pray that you will visit them. You visit their children. You visit everything that has to do with them. My Lord and my God, bring salvation and redemption to their families. Those who are sick, those who are lost, those who are broken, those who are in hospital beds, those who are bound. Lord Jesus, we pray that you will bring a mighty turnaround and deliverance to them. Lord, may they testify. May they have testimonies that will reveal your glory and your greatness. As you come forward, just make sure you tap your picture, whether it's on phone or it's an envelope late on the altar. It's a contact point. Jesus is in the house. And I'm telling you, you will have a testimony. You have a testimony. Amen. If you believe this, shout amen. Amen. I said, if you believe this, shout amen. Amen. You will testify of God's goodness. As you come and give, find the best that you have. Find the best that you have. The Bible says, I will not give what does not cost me. This is what David said. So when you sacrifice to God, always bring something from the depth of your heart that means something to you. Bring something that means something to you. God who has given you everything, always give him your best. I can hear better, amen. Amen. Touch your neighbor, say amen. 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 So I want you to grab it, and as you pray before you bring it, I want you to just declare something over your sacrifice. I want you to declare something over your sacrifice. I want you to declare something on your sacrifice now. Yes, yes. All, all yeah, I want you to declare something. I want you, I want you to, to declare something over your sacrifice. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and speak to Jesus. Open your mouth and pray, pray, pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Rabba Soparia Rabba Sire. Masikatura Namasanta Labradi. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We magnify your name. It has been by you and you alone. We thank you that we stand in an atmosphere of possibilities. And Father, as your children come before the altar, we thank you for the testimonies. We thank you for the testimonies. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We continue to thank our partners as they give towards Miami. Hallelujah. Come on, are we excited about Miami? We continue to thank our partners. Hallelujah. We also are praying on Saturday for Miami. So please, if you're in town, join us at 10 o'clock on Saturday. We're having a blast. Glory to God. Amen. Are we excited in the house tonight? Yes, yes. Are we excited in the house tonight? Yes. Are we really excited in the house tonight? Yes. Somebody shout Jesus. Hallelujah.
testimonies have you seen the goodness of the Lord in his house may you receive more than even you can imagine may your life be filled with testimonies may you have an opportunity to come before his house just as you witness people coming to give testimonies his visitation be upon you so that you come into his house and testify of his goodness the Lord richly bless you remember to invite friends and family for our Sunday service and uh, remember we're also praying for the crusade that we have in Miami so if you are in town and you have two hours you, you could come and pray with us amen hallelujah god bless you and we love you and we'll see you soon amen god richly bless you amen god bless you Tonight was amazing. Tonight was so amazing, you guys. The, what the prophet did and how Jesus used him so mightily tonight was such a beautiful thing. People were being delivered. Of course, uh, prophecy went forth. It was such an amazing night. And I just want to encourage you guys to continue to call upon the name of Jesus. Amen. But before you guys, you know, go to sleep or if it's early in the morning, we have two announcements. Tomorrow is youth night. Amen. And on November 18th is Miami nights. Okay. Evangelist Betty, I believe, will be hosting the youth night tomorrow. Amen. So you guys, you know, bring the youth high school, you know, the younger kids, they can come and, and you know, let's just have a, a fun time in the Lord. Amen. We love you guys and we'll see you soon.